Welcome, welcome. My name is Josh Lockhart. This is the Insurance 101 call. Uh, the our, our fearless leader, my counterpart, Sean Simpson, is away with his family, and he wanted to have somebody on the call that had more hair on the top of the head, his head than he did, and that is the only reason that he asked me to do this call. So when he sees this, love you, Sean. Um, and so what we do on this call every single week is one, we, we, we train, we talk about topics that are, uh, very important. And some of the first ones that, you know, we all need to hear, rehear to sharpen our skills to get better. Right. So it's, it's one thing to talk a lot about, you know, uh, 30,000 foot overviews and ideas and, and all this types of things, but what moves the ball down the field helps our clients and gets you as the agent paid is the blocking blocking and tackling of insurance, which is usually like, hey, let's work on getting an appointment. Let's work on the objections. Let's work on how you present, how you close, how you show options, because these are the things that we're doing every single day. And the reason that the top producers stay the top producers is because they get so good at these things, they're able to do them seemingly without thinking. And, and so for anybody who looks at somebody who's doing numbers way, way up here, and you are not, I just say that in a very, very broad sense, right? You you listen to what they do, right? So if anybody's here is brand new, George, I'm going to pick on you because like, this is basically your first week, right? You know, you might listen to some people that are are doing these big numbers and you go, wow, they like, they they sound so great. I promise you three months from now, you're going to be like, I'm so sick of, of hearing Drake say the same thing every day. Well, you wouldn't hear that because he doesn't have you very much, but um, <laughs> love you, man. But you, you're, you're going to hear the same thing every day. And you're like, oh, wow. They say the same dang thing every time. And it's so boring, but that is what wins the game. And I like to say at first you have to learn what to say. And when you no longer have to worry about what to say, then you can start truly being a master salesperson because now you're listening and focusing on what is actually being said, not just what the next thing you're going to roll out of your mouth, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is, is showing options. It's a part of the sale. And then we're going to do some role play. And uh, I'm going to pick on a few folks. So the way to not get picked on is to turn on your camera because if your camera's off, I'll definitely pick on you, okay? Um, you're, you're safe for now, Kenzie. So show somebody just bounced off, I think. All right, cool. So showing options, right? So we have different different parts to say. We got the intro, which is like maybe we're trying to do a one call, one close, and we want them to go grab a pen, or you're trying to set an appointment. Um, we'll spend, you know, later on it, we'll spend some time there. Once we get past that, we're rolling. You know, we've done the financial inventory, the needs analysis, you know, even we know what we're going to write. We know we're gonna write Aetna Ascendo or Americo Eagle or Term 100 or whatever. And we need to go over whatever options the person is going to pick from or what we're going to attempt to sell them. And um, that's where, like, in the beginning, when you're focused on final expense, and this is why we love final expense, it, it's pretty straightforward, right? I want some burial coverage. And usually that's going to be a denomination, 10, 20,000, something like that. Mortgage protection, it can get a little bit trickier. You hear these different terms and things thrown around. And there's two methods for showing options. There's two ways that people show options. You'll get the 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 three option close, and the other one is the top down close. And and usually, you know, you'll you'll see guys that do a lot of a uh, lot of lot of production, big numbers. They're like, I I top down sell, okay. And uh, so here here's kind of what it is, right? So let's say I'm uh, talking with Brian Lee. And he wants some final expense coverage and he wants to make sure that, you know, when he passes away, his family doesn't have to have a GoFundMe to bury him. OK, what I might say is we do the financial inventory and I'm like, OK, Brian, here's the options for you. We have, you know, 40,000 of a whole life coverage through Mutual of Omaha. We have 30,000 and we have 20,000, you know, 40,000 is this 30,000 is this much. 20,000 this much, which one do you want, right? And you pick, and which one do you, are you going to pick? You're usually going to pick the one in the middle, right? So great. And then and we sign them up for that, okay? But specifically, what are the word tracks that we use to describe uh, that process? How do we set it up? So it's not just like, 
hey, what do you think? And, you know, then they tell us that they'll call us back after they, you know, talk to everybody, their family about it and all the things that the, the people say. So that's the that's the three option close. Top down close is it's going to be something like, hey, Brian, here's the 40,000 of coverage. Here's how much it is. And then if he doesn't like it, then maybe we go to 30, maybe we go to 20. And somewhere along the way, he's going to find what's comfortable him and we're going to lock in on that, right? So that's the that's the two methods. When you're new, the three options, it's like it's tried and true. It's been here for, you know, half a century and in insurance selling. And, you know, it's simple, especially when you're getting started, okay? So what I'd like everybody to do is, is grab a sheet of paper. If you use some kind of client inventory or whatever you take notes on, um, I have mine right here client inventory and um i'm going to uh i'm going to kind of give you this fictitious person and we're going to write some options down and the other thing i want you to think about is most all of us on here are virtual selling we're telesales over the phone and so you know even more so how do you recreate it in the prospect's mind of what's actually going on because you know maybe they're sitting still and paying attention Probably not. I got this sign behind me that says people don't think, read, or listen. Help them anyway is what the bottom says. And if you don't think that's true, just you know, try selling for a week. You'll find out. Like Sometimes they're hearing you, but they're not actually listening. So you got to get them to listen. Or maybe they're driving. Maybe who knows what's going on. And so you, know, you start spitting numbers at them. They're like, I don't know what you're saying. Let me just think about it. I'll get back to you. Okay. So we want to we wanna help them to uh, digest in a in a in a way that it's like almost like we're there, okay. And so I'm going to kind of go through how I do that. All right. So let's say, for instance, um, if if somebody can do this like super super quick, um, if if somebody was, you know, on the phone with somebody today and you had a prospect you sold to or tried to sell to, just type in the chat like whatever it was, like 62 male smoker, final expense. Blah, blah, you know, real quick, give it, we'll give it, see if somebody can, can do this real fast. If you had one, somebody you talked to 75 male. Okay, great. 75 male. We're going to call this person, John. So I'm just, I'm just writing this down. You, you do it too. Okay. Stent heart attack. Ooh. Okay. Let's say the heart attack. How long, Lewis, since you're on a roll, how long ago was the heart attack? 2016. He's on it. Okay. So we're getting get a little product training within this. So John 75, he wants to leave some money behind to pay for his funeral um, to his kids, right? Doesn't, doesn't have a wife, to his kids. And so he had a heart attack, uh, let's see, seven years ago. And, you know, he's on a baby aspirin. Okay, great. Now. Oh, he took oxygen. He's on oxygen too, Josh. Oh, geez. Okay. 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 Now that that's 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 the nail in the coffin right there. So we 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 could have went you know mutual Omaha AIG or uh, Americo. Now we got to go straight to AIG uh, guaranteed issue because of the oxygen. Okay. Big bump. So, big bump. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll we'll roll with AIG. Okay. So and this is good. You'll get you'll get a little little few extra thing, a few extra nuggets on the AIG. Okay. So we we've done the underwriting. We're talking to John. We've been doing all the stuff. I say, hey, John, listen. All right. So look, I'm going through this. We, you know, the heart attack, there's a few things going on. You're on oxygen. All right. So uh, we want to make sure, number one, that you get approved for coverage. And then who's going to be cheapest and best? And because uh, you have a few things going on here, um, that does limit our options. But I, you know, we're, we're going to find something. There's actually a couple of companies out there that look like they might accept some pre-existing situations like they have one in particular called AIG. They have this re really unique coverage that um, they do accept pre-existing situations like this most of the time. Okay. And notice I'm really trying to stay away from any absolutes, I'm not saying yes, definitely. And this, okay. So the way the policy works, John, it's write this down. So everybody, you're John and I'm going to have you write this down. Okay. So what I'd like you to write down, John, is the word permanent. Okay. This policy is permanent, meaning you can't outlive it. It's going to last as long as you do. So that's really great. Number two, um, the benefit doesn't go down and the premium doesn't go up. So it's, it's kind of like a set it and forget it, right? You're not going to have to worry about this policy all the time. 
All right. And then thirdly, write down two years. Okay. Here's the cool thing. Um, a lot of companies, you know, when you're on oxygen and you've had heart attacks and all these different things, they'll just deny you. Uh, what this company does is um, they're more accepting because in the first two years of the policy, if you were to pass away, they're going to give you all the money you've paid into it plus 10%. It's almost like a bank account that you're putting money into, which you're getting 10% on your money, which you, you basically can't do anywhere. The banks give you like 0.1%, right? And so all the money paid in plus 10%. After the first two years, you have the full benefit of the policy, okay? So let's say John's on a fixed income. You know, he's making 1100 bucks a month and that's social security. He gets paid on the third of the month, okay? So obviously John's got $1,100 a month. We know that John's not crushing it. He's 75. So what do also we know? Insurance is going to cost a lot of money. All right. And he wants to be, let's say, cremated. All right. Lewis, did he want to be cremated or buried? Did he say? Buried. Buried. Okay. So, all right, John, you wanted to be buried. Now, I don't know if you know what the national average for burial and cremation is. For cremation, it's 5,000. For burial, it's 10,000. And um, I mean, that's right now. Who knows what it's going to be in, you know, 10 years and everything's getting more expensive. Okay. So what I would do now, we already know that AIG goes up to 25,000. So one way to go about this is we know, like, we don't know what he can afford, but like $1,100 only stretches so far and he's got bills, right? So what you could do is so, okay, John, write this down. I'm going to show you what the maximum is and we'll get some options. And the best we can do is pick one to see if we can get approved for. Okay, John. So write down number one, two, and then three under that. So write a list, one, two, and three. Okay. And you got the words permanent above that, right, John? Okay. So under number one, this is like the, the maximum coverage that you can potentially get um, for your family. All right, so write down 25,000, 25,000. And this is going to be for like burial. And then, you know, your your kid, you know, Sally and Jason, you'll, you'll be able to leave a little extra money behind for them um, in addition to paying for a funeral. All right, so this is the most robust plan. Number two is we have, you know, 15,000. 15,000. So again, right now this would pay for like a, like an average burial, but you know, five, 10, 15 years from now, if costs go up, you, you're still going to be okay. And, you know, you might even have a couple bucks left behind to, you know, leave for, for Sally and Jason. All right. And then number three is going to be just basic burial, right? This is no more, no less. This gets the job done. Um, just just what you wanted. Really not going to have anything extra behind, but you don't have to worry about leaving the financial burden on Sally and Jason. Okay. You got those numbers, John? 25,000, 15,000, 10,000. Okay. The $25,000 plan, if you want to write down, you know, it's going to be $300, $300 a month. So that's like the Cadillac. The 15,000, that's going to be you know, $220 a month. And then the 10,000 is going to be, you know, $170 a month. Okay. Got all that. All right. Any questions on the coverage part of it? No. Okay. John. So just based on the coverage and the affordability aspect, which one of those would be the best for you to get approved for if you could. And John's going to say, uh, I don't know, probably number two. Okay. Sounds great. I, you know, I definitely agree with that. So uh, let's go ahead and finish up this request coverage. Uh, if you would grab your ID. Simple as that. Okay. And so what I did is I repeated myself a lot. That's number one. Because if you tell them one time, that's not enough ever, uh, you know, and then, you know, the, the, the people that we're talking about, they don't have an insurance license. And so you say, oh, this is term insurance. They probably don't know what that means. 
This is whole life insurance. They probably don't know what that means. Like I've even had people that get in arguments with me. I'm like, okay, this is whole life insurance. <laughs> and they're like, I don't want whole life insurance. I just want life insurance. I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, there's different kinds. No, 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 I don't want different kinds. I just want life insurance. Just, just give me life insurance. I'm like, okay. Right. So repeating yourself, being clear, using basic definitions, right? Whole, yes, it is whole life. Most people know whole life means whole, but hey, it's permanent. It's never like you can take something that's so simple instead of saying whole life and assuming everybody knows what that means. Say, say, Hey John, this is permanent insurance. Okay. It lasts your whole life. As long as you do, the benefit never goes down. The premium never goes up. This is kind of like a set it and forget it. Isn't that cool? Oh yeah. That's, that sounds really, really good. You know what I mean? So like if we're, if I came to your house and we're putting red carpet in your house, you're like, okay, red carpet is not exciting. But if I'm like, you know, this is like, I don't know. I don't know what, 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 this is a scarlet cover, you know, scarlet duvet cover that was made with, you know, 200 count Egyptian cotton, whatever. You're like, Oh, okay. This is pretty fancy. Like that's, that's the idea when you're going through these things, you can take simple, simple things that you take for granted because you think you don't know about insurance because maybe you just passed your test. I promise you, you know more than most of the clients. So if you keep things simple and explain it, they they really feel like you know your stuff and you've really helped them understand what's going on, okay? So that would be a good example of a, a three option close, right? We go through the three options and who feels that I said, like Georgia, because you're brand new, did you feel like I did anything that was like, wow, that, that's like super crazy, high level. I've never heard that stuff before my, you know, boot camp or anything. No. No, S super basic. You could probably do that right now. And that that's good enough for, for most clients. Okay, where the magic comes in is once you get going and you're seeing somebody's budget, all these weird things start to happen, right? Somebody goes, let's say for example, we're talking to uh, we're talking to Barbara, and Barbara says, "Well, you know, I want a fixed income." I, and sometimes they'll say, "I can only spend fifty, sixty dollars at most." Anybody ever have that? So they'll say something like that. I can only spend fifty, sixty dollars at most. And so, if you want, if you if you're a rookie, you go and go. Okay, well, hey, fifty dollars uh, that'll get you seven thousand of insurance through Aetna. Nah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And then they 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 jump up. They're like, I gave them exactly what they told me, and they still said no. Right? It's because what they really wanted was some something more. Right? And so you get somebody that says, "Well, I, I got to stay within fifty dollars." So you can three option close it and go, "Okay, Barbara, cool." So looks like what we have here, and let's say she's you know fifty eight. Looks like what we have here doesn't matter the carrier. I was I said Aetna, so we'll go with that. Okay, so Aetna, they have a policy. So number one, this is this is more than your budget. I'm just showing you what you know what the maximum is, right? And let's say it's twenty thousand dollars, and that's going to be that's going to be a hundred and ten dollars a month. Okay, and then option two is fifteen thousand a month or excuse me, 15,000 of coverage. And that's going to be $65. I'm just making these numbers up. And then number three is 10,000. And that's going to be like $48. All right. And what did I just do there? So I showed her something that was way more th than her budget. She's definitely not going to go for that because that's like more than double. I showed her something that was a little bit more than her budget and a little bit under her budget. So she's going to look at the 48 and go, well, I don't want that because I have more money to spend and 10,000, that'll get me a burial, but it won't get me much more than that. 65 is, I said 50 to 60, but it's only nine more dollars. And I really would like to have a little extra behind. So yeah, I'll definitely go for the 65. Now it's to you and me, it's only 15 more dollars. That's $180 that you just made extra and help the client with more coverage. And who, who here makes like $180 in five minutes? You just did because of the way you showed the numbers. 
right? So that's a good three option close. All right. So we've we got to say what the the insurance is. It's permanent. It's term. Let's do a term one just just for um, just for kicks and, and giggles. So let's say uh, this is just general life insurance. This is not mortgage protection. We have a 38 year old and uh, you know got a couple kids and they just want some life insurance to make sure their babies are taken care of. Okay. So they're healthy enough and say, we're going to, we're going to go through a CBO. I love CBO. And so this is how I three option close a CBO. Okay. And let's say they make four grand a month. Okay. All right. So uh, George, I'm going to pick on you. We, we were practicing earlier today and uh, I'm going to be the agent and you, you can be the client. Okay. So you can just an answer my questions here. So um, Georgia, um, do you, do you know much about life insurance? Say no. Um, no. Okay, cool. All right. So um, write the, and everybody write these things down. All right. So I, I have a good idea of what we need to do. And again, you know, the main goal here is we want to make sure not only are you taking care of or are you leaving money behind to take care of like your final expenses, but you got those two babies and you want to make sure that they're not on the streets. They have money to grow up and, you know, live a good life, right? If the worst were to happen. Okay. So you make $40,000 a month. That's $50,000 a year. And you might say, well, I just need, you know, a $50,000 policy. I'm going to show you all the options and what the maximum is. But I would challenge you to think in terms of like, how long could your kids live if your income was shut off tomorrow? And that's not a fun thing to think about, but you know, if they only have $50,000, that would, that wouldn't get them very far. Okay. So write this down. So we're going to write down uh, number one, write down this word or this letters, write down CBO, CBO. Cashback. Yeah. That stands for cashback option. And so Georgia, there's two kinds of main, main kinds of insurance. There's permanent or a whole life, which lasts forever. And then there's term insurance. Have you ever heard of those, those words? I've heard of term, but not. Okay. Whole. Yeah. The idea with term is you have it for a period of time. It's kind of like renting. And when the lease is up 10 years, 20 years, it's done. It's over with. Okay. And you walk away and you don't have any coverage anymore. And that's good because it's cheaper. But the problem is, you know, you're 38 right now, you're 60, and then you're trying to figure out, you know, how to get insurance and maybe your health isn't great and it can get really, really expensive. So it looks like you're young enough and potentially healthy enough. There's this thing where at the end of the term, if you don't use it, you get your all your money back, right? So I like it because I'm admittedly, I, I'm, I'm good at paying my bills. I wish I was better at saving my money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably the same way. And so- I like knowing that, hey, if I, I have the insurance, but if I don't use it, then I'm still going to get paid. And you know what's better than having insurance? A bunch of money in your bank account, right? Yeah. So write this down. So we got CBO and then write down 30. So this coverage is going to last for 30 years, Georgia. So you're going to be 68. And, you know, the, those babies aren't going to be babies anymore, right? And so the, the maximum, if you write this down, so the maximum that you qualify for based on your age is 400,000. So write down 400 slash 400, 400 slash 400. Okay. And then number two, write down 300 slash 300. And then number three, write down 200 slash 200. Okay. So, and then let's see, write down, okay, so what the 400 and 400 means, over the next 30 years, if you were to pass away for any reason, your kids would get $400,000. Pretty simple, right? Doesn't matter what year it is or why it is, they're going to get 400 grand. The second part of that is the living benefits. Now, I don't know about you, we're about the same age. Yes, I'm worried that if I don't come home tomorrow, what happens to my kids? But I'm even more worried, like, what if I get injured or sick and I can't work and I can't bring home income? Now we're all on the street, right? Right. And so the living benefits, 
is if you get sick injured disabled, you can use that 400 while you're living to pay bills, get by, do what you need to do. And so it breaks down into three categories. Number one, terminal illness, real simple. You have 12 months to live. Okay. Number two is a critical illness. Write that down. Um, that's going to be like heart attack, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's, organ failure, things like that. And then number three is the big one. It's chronic illness. That means any injury or illness where after 90 days in a doctor's note, you can't perform two of the six activities of daily living. That's going to be like feed yourself, bathe yourself, medicate yourself, get to the restroom, move, move around from, you know, chair to chair, that kind of thing. So that could even be simple stuff. Like a buddy of mine, he got into a car accident. He was in the hospital for six months. He had a catheter and couldn't get out of bed by himself. What do you do then? Right. And so he was, he, you can exercise this policy and drain it up to 400,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So write down these two numbers. So on the 400, 400, um, let's say this is going to be $200 a month. I haven't said that, but let's just say it is. So write down this number here. So in 30 years, write down 72,000. So if you outlive this policy by one day, you're going to get back $72,000. So that's kind of like, you know, kind of like putting money in a bank account, but you're putting the insurance company's bank account. They're going to hold on to it for you and give it back to you. And then write down $200 because that how is how much this, this one is. Okay. Okay. All right. On the 300 one, same thing, $300,000 of death benefit over the whole 30 years. And the second 300 is the living benefits. Just like I described, if any of that happens, you can access $300,000 while you're living. And then write these two numbers down, write down 54,000. Because if you outlive this policy by one day, that's what they're going to give back to you. And this, the monthly premium on this one's $150 a month. Okay. And then the last one, same idea, 30 years, 200 in death benefit, 200 in living benefit. So you can use it for either or. And at the end of the 30 years, write down this number, 36,000 and $100 a month. Okay. So any questions on the coverage part of it, how that works, Georgia? Um, No, it seems pretty oh. straightforward. Yeah, it really is. You know, once somebody explains it to you, it seems complicated before that, but then, you know, it's like, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It does this if you die, if you get sick and you're able, does this. So really this policy, why I love it is you're buying a guarantee. No matter what happens, it's going to pay you. If you die, it's going to pay you. If you get sick, injured and live, it's going to pay you. And if nothing happens, like we hope you get all your money back. So it's going to pay you. So there's no way that this doesn't work for you unless you just don't pay your monthly premium. So just based on the coverage and the affordability, because all we can do is see what you can get approved for. And if you can get approved, uh, which one of those makes the most sense for you to try to get approved for? Oh, I really like the first option. First option. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll finish this up. See if you can get approved for that. If you would grab your driver's license and we'll, we'll wrap this up. Okay. So, you know, I, I love doing a CBO like that. So you, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, 400,000, that's what it is. But you break it down like that. You'll get people that go, Wait, so the second 400 is option two? No, 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 we're still on option one. That's all of it. Oh, wow, it does all that? And again, you go through it and you have to repeat yourself because they'll get lost, they'll get mixed up, they didn't write it down right. And then again, you want them to make sure they're absorbing all the information and make it really, really simple for them to pick one. Okay, so that's a good, those are both uh, three option closes. Top down selling. Okay, top down selling, same, you know, same idea. We're on the same product. We're doing the same stuff. And, you know, take Georgia, for example, here. I'm like, okay, Georgia, write this down and just imagine she wrote down the same thing. So we got 400. I'm going to, we're going to go through what the, the maximum that you qualify for. You can even say something like, yeah, I'm just required to show what the max that you pre-qualified for Georgia. Okay. So what we're going to go through is, you know, what you can qualify for. And uh, if we need to make an adjustment, just let me know. Okay. All right. So Georgia, write down, you know, CBO, write down 30 years, because this is going to last for 30 years. And we go through the whole thing, write down 400 slash 400. We explain the whole thing for the next 30 years. You have 400 death benefit if you pass away for any reason, 400 living benefit. We break that down. And 
And then I say, hey, write this number down, $72,000, right? So that's gonna be waiting for you at the age of 68 years old, right? And so we both can go on a, a Hawaiian excursion. Sound good? Cool. All right. And then this one is gonna be $200 a month. All right, $200 a month. All right, so now Georgia, any questions on that? Um, no. No, okay, cool, cool. All right, so I just wanna make sure, you know, from, from a coverage and budget standpoint, um, you know, any reason we wouldn't be comfortable there uh, for your family? It, it's a little expensive. Little expensive. So yeah, totally understand the, the kind of policy that everyone should have is number one, the one they can afford to keep. All right. So I tell you what, um, where, where do we need to be from a budget standpoint to, so you can, you know, put your head down at night and not have to worry about it. And I'll see what the maximum amount of insurance that we can get. We need to be um, like, I, I can really only afford about 125 a month. 125 a month. Okay. And we go down to, you know, all right, here's, you know, 125, we slide it there and that'll give you like, you know, $275,000 of insurance and we go through the whole thing. Okay. So is that more of a, of a comfortable spot for you? Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool. All right. We'll see if we can get approved for that. Um, if you want to grab your driver's license and uh, we'll wrap this up. All right. And so, you know, now just like it, it, it kind of actually played out where it, you know in the first one you were, you were nice about it and you know you picked the you picked the high one, um, but what happens a lot of times is when you top down sell, sell, you where we ended up you know we ended up somewhere around this would have been at you know let's see hundred and it probably would have been like hundred and thirty dollars a month just based on like the numbers I wrote down a second ago like we don't know exactly. But most likely, if if everything was the same, we we might have got an extra thirty dollars a month, um, in premium from Georgia, versus you know when you when you do the three option close, you end up doing like these big, big breaks four hundred, three hundred, two hundred. But maybe she would have ended up at two seventy five versus two hundred. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? So with top down close, if you get really good at it, that that's kind of that kind of what happens. And then the other thing is, a lot of times, if anybody's on here, um, and you see like big premium that other people are selling, and you're like, how are they doing that? We get we we sh we show our clients comfortable or insurance and prices that we're comfortable showing them. We're shopping with our wallet, not theirs, and we're like, oh yeah, that's that's way too expensive. I'm not showing them that. Where, you know, other folks like Sean Simpson, he'll just show them something way out of range and then come down. And then every once in a while, somebody goes, yeah, 800 bucks a month sounds good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And or they're like 800 bucks. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe anybody would spend that much insurance. And he's like, oh, yeah, the last one I did was was that much. You know, the guy really, you know, he this, this and this. Um, but yeah, yeah, we have, you know, $400 a month. Oh, $400 sounds way better. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, yes, you know, we have to show things that are budget friendly, but a lot of times we're way too skittish and shy to, you know, show the little numbers. And what happens is yes, they'll buy it from you and then they'll cancel it because they're going to buy what they really, really want from somebody else that's willing to show it to them. Okay. And that can go both ways. So I had I had a client one time, I I signed up for a basic term and I don't remember what it was. It was, you know, we went back and forth about budget and it was like, let's say it was a hundred bucks a month. And a week later they bought a policy from somebody else for 400 bucks a month. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's all in, you know, the value, how you explain it and being willing to show them. And, you know, you can always come down. So whether it's, you know, top down or three, the, the three option close, um, that's kind of how you want to do it. Anybody have any questions about showing options? Yeah, yeah, Kelly. Yeah, that, as far as options, I I get it. It's always cool to upsell, but on the other hand, uh, hmm. Well, just doing final expense. Uh, 
a little bit timid about upselling, especially in final expense due to, you know. When you say the, upselling, upselling from what? Um, let's say, well, okay, forget about the upsell. But let's say you have them at $60 a month and you show them a better plan that's at $100 a month. And they say, well, I like that better. It's got better, you know, living benefits, you know, with America or something like that. But then they come back and they get the policy and they say, well, I can't afford this. Then what do you do? Well, that why, why would that happen if either if we did the top down selling and they they would either say, no, it's true. Some sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. People can say that on any kind of plan. But like top down selling, we're asking we're asking leading questions to make sure that we're on the right thing. Like we just did with Georgia and she let me know, hey, that's too expensive. Or we're giving them three options and they pick one. It, it really doesn't happen where we're showing them something for $60 and we're like, actually, let me take you something to $100. You know what I mean? No. Okay. My bad. Yeah. Now, if that's happening to you, I would I would say, well, let, let's talk about that and, and figure out why that's happening. Does that make sense? Sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, is it possible that somebody just gets excited and like they, they, you know, like I, as we speak, I have somebody text me, they're like, Hey, I want to cancel because I went through my finances and, you know, 70 bucks a month is too much. It happens. Okay. Um, now we went through her finances, $70. She can definitely afford it. Really probably what the story behind the story is, is she talked to her friends, which that's what she said. And her friend's I talked her out of it for whatever reason, you know? So uh, I would say, I would even say a lot of times uh, we were talking about this with Georgia today. Um, I had a presentation this morning. I didn't close. And then Georgia, I went three for three after. So maybe, maybe you're just bad luck. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but you know, the person it, you could have listened to the call and been like, Oh, they thought it was too expensive. It's rarely about that. It was really that, she wanted her husband to get insurance. He wouldn't get insurance. He wouldn't talk about insurance. There was no way he was getting insurance. And she was trying, hoping that maybe she would find a policy just amazingly cheap and amazingly rich in benefits that he would change his mind and get insurance when the reality was he told her, I don't want to be talking to no stupid insurance man. So, you know what I mean? We get it in our head. Oh, it's about price when it really isn't. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. Cool. All right. So uh, this is insurance 101. So this would be not an insurance 101 call if we didn't do some kind of role play. And, you know, there's lots of different things that you can you can practice. And, you know, from the intro to the call, setting appointments, going through the whole thing from from front to back. But what I find is what we spend most of our day doing, most of us, is getting through that first intro to where we've like you know got them on the phone they got a pen in hand and like we're ready to talk about insurance okay and so what what we're going to go through here really quick and i'll pick on a few people uh, a lot of people are either one call one closing or even if you're doing appointments when you get onto an appointment there's that first little bit that that you kind of need to say to make sure everybody's on the same page okay and so let's uh what, what we're going to start at is you have somebody on the phone, you've gone through the intro, they have a pen and we're ready to talk about insurance. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the scenario. And there's this little chunk that I, I want you to be prepared for. And that's, you know, we're going to call setting the table. That's what we called it in the home. And, you know, we're on the phone, so we don't have to set a table, but figuratively speaking. Okay. So, uh, Jordan, I'm going to pick on you again. I'm going to kind of go through it to give you an example, and then I'm going to pick on some folks, okay? Okay. All right, so, Georgia, you got that pen handy? Yeah, I've got it. Okay. And so, right now, I'm sending you, uh, you know, my license and credentials that I'm required to send. I have to send by state law. So, I'm texting those over uh, to copy my license and a picture of all the carriers. You see that? Yep, I see it. Oh. Okay, cool, cool. Do you recognize any of those carriers? Uh, yeah, I think I've heard of a couple of them. Awesome, awesome. All right, great. 
So I'm not, you see all those carriers. I'm not a, like a sales rep with a company. I'm a, what's called an underwriter through nearly all the state rated carriers here in Ohio. And so I don't have any fancy presentations for you. All I'm going to do is ask you uh, about two minutes of questions, mostly on your health. And then with that, we can look at all of the carriers to see which ones are most likely to approve you for the best coverages and then which ones are going to be cheapest and best for you. If we do find a good option, um, then all we can really do today is uh, send a request off to the insurance company because ultimately they have to think about it first. They have to look through your health and prescription history. It takes them a, anywhere from two to seven days on average. They'll get back with you and, and let you know if you're approved. And once you're approved, then you can actually start the policy with them at that point. Okay. And so that's all we can do today. Now, uh, when you were thinking about this, you know, it was this something most people, they just want to make sure they're leaving a little bit of money behind uh, to take care of the financial burdens for barely cremation. Some want to leave something behind for their family. And then the third category is maybe they have like a big loan, like a mortgage or something. Which one of those kind of describes where your head was at? Um, I definitely want to leave some behind for my family. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Now, I, and, and we'll kind of pause right there. All right. So now there, there's certainly a couple things you can add and, and, or not add, but the meat and potatoes there is like, here is what we're going to do. Does that make sense? And if you don't do that, how many people have started the health questions and then the person's like, uh, well, they're, they're not having it. I ain't going to answer that or like, just give me the price or whatever else. Anybody ever had that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot of times it's because you didn't go through that or they weren't paying attention. Like, so I just asked Georgia, hey, I sent those, those, do you, did you see any of those carriers? Do you recognize any? The reason I ask her if she recognized any, because what does most people do? You send it, they're not paying attention and they go, yeah, yeah, it came through. And you think they looked at it, they didn't. And then you ask them for their bank account in five minutes and they don't trust you because they have not seen anything to trust you, even though you sent it to them, even though they said they got it, people don't think, read or listen, they didn't pay attention to it. So I'm going to ask them a question. Hey, do you recognize any of those? It's going to force her to look. Yeah, yeah, Mutual of Omaha, Aetna. Yeah, got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that that's that's why you want to do that. And then telling them, here's what we're going to do today. So you get the guy that goes, oh, I just want to quote. So, hey, hey, John, listen, you know, um, maybe you got to the wrong department. I'm not the sales department. I'm the underwriting department. My job is to make sure that we're only dealing with companies and coverages that you most likely qualify for. So we're not just throwing mud at the wall and hoping you stick or making up quotes that you can't get anyway. Uh, so when we get off this call, you're going to know uh, with a good degree of certainty what you qualify for and that you can actually get it. So, you know, when the when you have to go home and tell your wife, hey, I'm looking at this coverage, it's something that you probably can get and not not maybe. Is that fair? OK, that kind of thing. Right. So who and and so what i'm going to ask you guys is just i, I want to hear that piece right that piece okay hey you got your pen okay great and then take them through so i the the potential customer know what is going to happen on this call okay who's got it down who wants to go first hi them okay okay let's roll man what are we doing exactly <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you want me to start from the start from the top? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Like introductory all the way to yeah, go go for it, man. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, Josh. Hey. Hey, Josh. How are you doing today? Terrible. Did you really want to know that? No, it's okay. But hopefully, I can. Oh, you don't care about me, do you? <laughs> hopefully, I can make your day better. Okay. My name is Haitha Malur. I'm the medical field underwriter in the state of Georgia. And I'm reaching out because of this form that was filled out on Facebook uh, for the burial and the final expense program. And you left your beneficiary name as uh, John Hampton. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And so basically, I'm just going to ask you some few questions. And um, it's a pretty simple process. 
Um, I'll just ask you a few questions to get to know about you. After that, I'll ask you some medical questions and some financial questions. And based on how you answer those questions, that's going to give me a good idea of which carrier might approve you. And once we do that, uh, we're going to need to submit a simple request. Once we find a plan that you like that fits within your budget, we're going to sim uh, submit a simple request to the carrier because I need to get you in front of the carrier so we can get you approved. Sounds good? Uh, yeah. All right, perfect. Now, when we do submit the um, the request to the carrier, they're going to ask for two pieces of information. One, they're going to ask for your social security number because they want to make sure that you are who you say you are, not someone that's trying to take, uh, take out insurance in someone else's name committing insurance fraud. And the second thing is they're going to check your MIB, which is your medical information bureau. The other piece of information they're going to ask for is to have a bank in, um, uh, uh, a bank and institute home file or a credit union. They want to make sure that you are the insured, that you are going to be the one paying for it, and it's coming out of your account. And um, usually um, takes two to seven days to get the approval. And once the approval is, uh, once you're approved, they're going to withdraw the payment and then you're going to be covered right away. Sounds good? Yeah. Well, how do I know like who you are? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's a, a state requirement that I share this information with you. I'm going to send you a text message to your this number. Can I, do you accept the text messages on this number? Yeah. Can you receive it? Okay, perfect. All right, can you go ahead and open that link? I just sent, you, sent it to you. Okay. All right. Now, when you open it, you're going to see a picture of a family there, like a husband, wife, and a kid. That's not me. OK, oh, if you okay. scroll just a little bit down, you're going to see a bald, handsome guy there. Do you see that guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's me. Ah, OK. Now, okay. now you have a picture to go with that fa uh, face to go with the uh, picture to go with the voice. OK. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see the product names that I represent that I have, uh, which is uh, final expense, mortgage protection, IULs and annuities. Do you see that part? Yep. Perfect. Now, if you scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see some names of states highlighted in green. Those states are the states that I am licensed in. Do you see those? Yep. Perfect. Can you click on the one that says Michigan, please? Got it. All right. When you look on the right-hand side, right top side, you're going to see NPN 19310152. That's my license number. That's like my social security number for my uh, license. And on the left-hand side, you can see my name and my home address. This is where I reside. And the same information, you're going to find it on all the states. Uh, when you click on them, you'll see them. You'll find all the same information on there. Perfect. Now, if you scroll down just a little bit more, you can see names of carriers. Those are like 20 plus different carriers that I am appointed with. I don't work for them, but I work with them. So what that means is I don't favor any uh, carrier, I'm here to work for you. What's best for you? What's who's going to give you the uh, best uh, policy with the great options that goes along with the um, uh, that fits within your budget? Sounds good. Yep. All right, perfect. So I'm just going to dive right into it. I don't have a fancy presentation, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and then we'll dive right into the medical questions. Cool. And what made you look into getting this policy? Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. That was good. Okay. That was good. Thank you. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, so I just three one, you know, get the credibility. And so, guys, so different people have essentially different things. It's all it all leads to the same stuff, meaning some people have a producer website on uh CRMs that we use. You can have you can get those, you know, we'll let you know which ones they are. Um, they can send them a link. Um, some people like Kasha and she's made some for us, you know, it's like a one page PDF with your picture, all the carriers before I had any of that stuff. I literally would send them a nice, nice, clean picture of my driver's license, my insurance license and a picture of all the carriers. And people are like, Oh, you don't have to send me your driver's license. I'm like, Hey, you need a picture ID. Like, you know, like no big deal because I'm asking for all their stuff. It's, it's not a problem. And so uh, whatever you do, just send them something and make sure they look at it. Okay. So I think that was good. All right. Who who's next? Preferably somebody Thank you. on the newer side. I think Georgia she, she needs to go. 
<laughs> Georgia, okay. you, you just got voluntold. Okay. <laughs> I always like a challenge. Okay. She's not allowed to go too hard on me, okay? All right. Okay. So you want me to start from the beginning or start after you get your pen? Um yeah, yeah. We you start we I just I just grabbed my pen. Okay. Okay, so you got your pen? Okay. Yep. Okay, did your phone receive text messages? Uh, yep. Okay, I'm sending you a text message. Um, and it is my license number. And then if you scroll down a little bit, there is a list of a bunch of carriers. Have you heard of any of those? Uh, yeah, one or two. Okay. Um, so those are all the carriers that I work with. I'm not a captive agent, so... Uh, I don't work for one specific insurance company. I work with multiple, so I'm able to shop for you. Um, that way you get the best price of the best product that's comfortable for you. Um, okay, I don't have a fancy presentation. I'm not like the sales reps that they send out to you. Um, so first, I'm going to ask you some medical questions and some financial questions. And then based on how you answer those, uh, I'll know which carriers might decline you and which ones might approve you. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, mm, <laughs> I ran out of notes that I wrote. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> It's okay. That's all I got right now. What what you what you said? I don't have my script in front of me. This is all stuff I just wrote down just now. Okay. What what your what you said sounded good up until that point. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Drake. What you got, man? Let's hear it. Oh, ring ring. Hello. Hey, Josh. This is Drake. I was just getting back to you about the information you requested on our site just this morning. I see uh, your birthday here is uh, June 16, 73. Is that correct? Yeah. What's this about? Yeah, it's about the life insurance request that you submitted. I see your mortgage is also about 233000 Most of my clients are looking to typically protect their mortgage or a significant other, or maybe their children if something were to happen to the primary breadwinner. Was that kind of what you were thinking? Yeah, that was it. Great. I'm just going to need you to grab a pen and a piece of paper real quick. I have some important information to give you. Okay. Got it. Great. While you were grabbing that, just for the sake of time, I'm assuming since you confirmed our uh, appointment via text, uh, did you see the text message I just sent you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I saw it come in. Perfect. If you could click on that real quick, it'll just save us both some time. The state requires me. So the Department of Insurance here in uh, Georgia, where you live, requires me to give you my social security number of uh, being a licensed insurance agent. Do you see that there? Yeah, I see it. Do you notice there's about 15 other states listed there as well? Yep. Great. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see a list. There's about, I don't know, 18 of the 40 A-rated carriers that I have access to. You probably recognize a couple like Mutual of Omaha, Aetna, Transamerica. Those yeah. Are the yeah, definitely. Yeah. So just, just to give you a little piece of credibility on my part, in order for me to be an independent insurance agent, not a captive agent, do you know the difference between the two? I don't. Yeah. So a captive agent typically works for one of those insurance carriers or others that I do not represent, such as New York Life or AAA or State Farm or Farmers. Um, and they have maybe one or two products that they can actually offer you where it's in my best interest to field underwrite a few medical questions for you and your family and then shop through these carriers, find you the best rate and the best benefits for your family. That way you get everything you're looking for and I do all the shopping for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Perfect. So from here, I'm just going to need a couple pieces of information to move forward. The account number is to validate that it's you requesting the information, not your uh, cousin in Alabama. Who do you bank with? Uh, Chase. 
Perfect. I have their routing number already in the server here with the insurance company as 12126726. What was the account number? Uh, 1206893. Perfect. And the social security number actually enables the insurance companies to pull up your medical information bureau and IntelliScript. Now, those two items do two things. Medical information bureau basically just wants to make sure the last 20 years you haven't had any medical procedures that would indicate you're already critically, chronically, or terminally ill. They're doing their due diligence. And same thing with IntelliScript. They're very simply just circling back and making sure you're not on medications that would indicate you're already chronically, terminally, or critically ill. Because, of course, we're just doing simplified insurance today. I'm not going to send a nurse out to your house and do blood work or urine or mouth swab. Does all that make sense? Yeah. So what is your SOCH? I got to give that now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, 423-78-6529. And the reason I had you give it to me now is because I'm going to actually submit through the Medical Information Bureau the first few steps just to get an idea of which direction to pivot with companies. And this one's the fastest. So within the next five minutes, you're also going to get a text message that says you're speaking with me because we don't submit requests to the insurance companies without your consent and authorization. So you'll get a very simple HIPAA type acknowledgement form. Does that make sense? Uh, Yeah. What, what? I don't know what that is. Which part? HIPAA. What's that? Really, Josh? So HIPAA is basically just making sure that you understand that I'm licensed and your medical information is private and neither myself or the insurance company could pass on any of the information you give me. It's just used to qualify you for the best rate and term possible for the insurance carrier that covers you. Does that sound about right? Yep. Perfect. Cool. Love it. So there you go. Thank you, Drake. A couple things now. So actually I did get somebody that like HIPAA, what's that? Um, so somebody just asked me that today. And I, I heard somebody say it uh, recently. It was like, Hey, you know, when you go to the doctor and you sign the forms before you go see the doctor. Yeah. So they can't, they can look at your health history, but they can't share it. This is the same thing. Oh, okay. Got it. Now um, I said earlier, you know, some people there, there's kind of two types of ways of setting the table. Uh, one way is saying, hey, I need the social, you know, I always put driver's licenses because some, some carriers need it, some carriers don't. I like to collect it just in case. Um, and then bank account. You can either say that up front or you cannot say it up front. Okay. Um, not wrong if you do it either way. You can sell if you do it both. Some, many people get, they're like, oh man, if I ask for it up front, you know, like they're going to freak out on me. Now, how many, how many times out of 10 do they freak out on you, Drake? Uh, this last month, not at all. Yeah. And, and the reason being is credibility, number one, right? Like, you know, like they requested it credibility. Okay. And then, you know, he sounds like, he sounds like somebody that we'd be talking about all the stuff he's talking about, right? You know, he's calm, he's confident, he's not, you know what I mean? Like, oh, hey, simple, simple little things. And this is how, like, why role play is important in listening to people, because I could say all of the same words as Drake, literally all the same words, but I, but he goes, yeah, go ahead, you know, social. And I go, uh, hey, yeah, so um, what, what's your social? I said the same thing, same words, but when I say I say it, it sounds like a question, like I expect him not to give it to me, and he's just like, "Yeah, I I need it." What's your social? It, you know, it's not what we say; it's how we say what we say. That's why it's so important. Okay, and so when, especially when we are in the home, like most of us were going like in homes. When I started, I wouldn't tell people. Hey, I need your banking, your social, and all these things. And what ends up happening is you're sitting in their house for an hour and you, you find out either they don't have a bank account or they're not going to give it to you. So if bare minimum, especially for anybody that's not doing mortgage protection, if you're doing 
final expense or internet leads, life leads, whatever, bare minimum, when you're at the top of the financial inventory, I would ask, hey, do you get, do you use a bank account or do you have like a card? Like a, like a, like a prepaid card, social security, direct express, which one do you have? And then they're going to tell you because the worst thing is you get all the way through an AmeriCo app and they go, oh, I get a, I have a direct express card and AmeriCo doesn't take direct express. That happened to me. Yeah. And so when you get to the money section, hey, hi them, are you working, retired, disabled? You know, I'm retired, I'm disabled, whatever. Okay, cool. Hey, hi them, do you get paid into a bank account and put your money in a bank account? Or do you have like a green dot, direct express, prepaid card, something like that? Yeah, I got direct express. Okay, cool. Because some companies you have to have a bank account, some companies you don't. So uh, definitely need to know that. That helps me to narrow down which companies it is. And you might want to grab that because we're going to have to do a verification. Simple. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, no, no big deal. I, I need to know that. Let's just, all these little things, the faster we can know them, it's going to help us save time and avoid you know, uh, different objections that could sneak up and, and hit us later, right? So if you're like, I don't want to ask certain questions, do you have to? No, but you should challenge yourself to do it. And then whatever you do, my bet, my my best advice in insurance, okay? No matter what it is, only change one thing at a time, okay? Like however you're doing things today, if it's not working, okay, let's, 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 Figure it out, talk with somebody, be on here and go, what's one thing that this coming week I can change? For most people, it's probably just gonna make be make more phone calls, right? Like that's that's the easy one. Make more phone calls. Or if you haven't made calls, make a call. Okay. But if you're making calls, you're doing things and you're not getting results, okay. Cause what happens is what most people do is they go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch lead vendors, I'm going to you know, switch dialing systems, uh, get this new CRM I heard about. I'm going to start asking for all the stuff up front and I'm going to top down sell. And you just messed your world up and you're not going to be selling for like two weeks. And you're going to be like getting all these objections in weird spots that you didn't before. And you're not going to know how to handle it. And you're like, oh, this new way doesn't work because when I ask for the social, they yell at me. It's because you're not confident in it because you haven't been doing it that way. Right. And so same thing with lead vendors. It's like, okay, I'm doing this kind of lead, but I heard Drake say he does this kind of lead. So let me try that. And then I heard Dan is doing live transfers. So let me try that too. And it's like, whoa, you just messed your world all up because like the way that you answer the phone when live transfer ant calls from the way that you answer the phone when, you know, a mortgage lead that you call is two totally different things. Right. And so you have to know that. So just literally just change one thing at a time. So here's the one thing I'm going to change and I'm going to get that down and then I'm going to change like the next thing. And if that works, I'll keep it in. If it doesn't work, I'll throw it away. Right. So just hear me now. Believe me later. Just change one thing at a time. All right. We got we don't have time for any more. All right. So, hey, guys, I hope you got something out of this. Um you know, Excuse me, I just I just have a quick question about Drake's uh, because, because your name is direct. Joshua. Go for it. Yes, he was very direct. Yeah. And, um, you know, he didn't find like I'm new. I'm not I'm just asking questions. I'm not saying yeah, yeah. he asked for the personal information before he found out like what it was for or anything. Do, do you do you sell a lot of policies that way or am I just being a sissy and not asking for it so quickly, you know? He he's yeah I'll I'll because okay, I know I can I can answer the question yeah he sells a ton of insurance um there's a he, there's a video out on Grady Polson's channel um he helped a hundred families in ninety days and do you have to do it that way no you don't um does a lot of people do it that way not necessarily uh, and it's not wrong it's not right the the point is um what you don't want to get in the habit of doing is you get you. And you'll know that you're doing this when you get to the end of a of a presentation and you've showed the options, and then you're kind of like you're you you throw the ball in the air and you hope it goes in the net. And you're like, what do you think? Do you want it? Okay, need your bank account. Don't yell at me. Like if that's happening, if you're getting to the end of a sale and you don't know in your 
gut that they're going to give it to you and you're going to make the sale, like that's a problem. You know what I mean? So whether it's like you ask for it right up front, like Drake does, or you tell them, Hey, I'm going to need these three things. So what I say is like, I set the table, then I'm like, hey, Josh, just so you know, when we do submit a request, every carrier requires the same three things, the same three pieces of validation, social security number, because that's how they put your medical uh, history, driver's license, and make sure you're not dodging kids in traffic, and you are who you say you are, and number three is a bank account. They actually validate it to make sure it's, number one, your account's attached to your name, so they know that somebody else isn't trying to apply and get insurance in your name and commit fraud, because that does happen. Any questions on those three pieces of information? Okay, great. Let's get started. You could tell them you could tell them that right up front, right? Or you could do the Sean Simpson thing and he just goes in the order of the app. And when it's that time to ask for that thing, he asks for it just stone cold. Hey, what's your social? I don't think it necessarily matters which way you do it as long as you do it and do it that way every single time. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.